Once we have a fresh installation at our target location, and we've moved over the modules, sites, and themes folder as well as our sites default files folder, there are a handful of changes that we may need to make manually. The first of these is part of the basic Drupal installation process. If you go to sites default settings.php, in fact, at default, before you do this, you need to make sure you have write permissions here. So we're going to change our permissions on this folder to give ourselves writing permissions. Then we're going to go into that and do the same thing on settings.php. We're going to edit the settings.php file. This is more or less a reminder about the installation process. If we scroll all the way down, we see that we need to put our trusted host settings at the bottom of this file. They're not there right now. So if you just do a control F, search for usually just the word trusted will do, you'll find trusted host configuration somewhere in this file. And you'll see some example code. We want to grab these few lines right in between the code and encode lines. Go to the very bottom of the file and paste those. Then we're going to delete everything preceding the actual code itself. So this space asterisk space, we're going to get rid of that and do that for each of these three lines. So it should look more or less like this. And then we're simply going to put our own domain here. Don't forget to change your top level domain if you need to. And on top of doing that, we'll copy that line and put it below itself. And we're going to have a version here excluding the preceding www. Once that's done, save our changes, close out of here, and make sure you lock this down once again by changing the permissions to remove writing permissions, and then go back up one level and do the same thing to your default folder once again. And then there's just two more simple things that may not even apply to the website you're working on. If you go back to your root directory of your site, public HTML in most cases, if you had any modifications to files such as .htaccess or robots.txt or even composer.json, it's best to manually go back and add those changes in rather than to try to copy the original file over. You might get some configuration that you don't necessarily want if you try to do it that way. So I recommend hand editing these files in whatever way you need. I'll show you what I mean. On .htaccess, if we go to edit that, the most common configuration here is the rewrite base. If your site is in a subdirectory, such as example.com slash Drupal or something like that, you need to uncomment this line by deleting the preceding hash symbol and just deleting Drupal here and writing your subdirectory name. In my case, I'm not using a subdirectory, so I'm going to undo these changes. Sometimes there may be other configuration changes up at the top of the file or really just they can be anywhere. So if, if you know of any of those changes that you've made, any directives that you've placed in your .htaccess file, you need to check those out and put them here if they apply to your new host location as well, such as a rewrite base or something like that. As a side note, if you're using Mac OS X, it can be sometimes a little bit stingy about showing you dot .files, any file that starts with dot, such as .htaccess. In our finder, for instance, here's the root directory of the website that I created for this tutorial that we've been creating together. And you see, I don't have .htaccess anywhere. That's because it's considered a hidden file, and it can be difficult for Mac OS X to get that to show it to you. What you can do instead is pull up the terminal, and then you need to find out where your website is located in your file system, and type cd, and then the path to that location. And then if you type ls-a, it should show you every file, including the dot .files that are there. Here we have .htaccess. If you want to look at that to see if you have any changes that you're unaware of, you can type nano, 
and it will show you the .ht access here, and you can browse through it. Finally, you want to check robots.txt as well. It's not uncommon to have placed directives here to tell search engines not to index certain parts of your site, please. And if you have any custom configuration here, you need to do the same thing on robots.txt. I'm going to close out of here. And just go add those changes in manually. And again, any other file that you have here, such as composer.json or any custom directories that for some reason you might have in your site's root directory, you'll need to upload those as well. These steps won't apply to a lot of people, except for the settings.php's trusted host settings line that we needed to place. But if you do have any custom configuration in any of these files, this is the time to put those in at your target location.